The First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and petition the government for a redress of grievances. But as we all learned in kindergarten, first is the worst, second is the best, and third is a bird. Yeah, I don't know if that's exactly how it goes, but you know, third bird, they rhyme, so it's got to work, right? It makes a little bit of sense. But look, this is this is why we see more people accepting censorship and equating guns with freedoms. And most people don't really know what the Third Amendment says. If you ask somebody what the Third Amendment says, they're like, I don't know, is that the one that g grants you the right to have a pet in your home? That that's was that a, was that something? That they did back in the ye old days, you know, they 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 were they were like, hey, we want to, we want to have pets, and they were like, but no, animals, animals live on the outside, and then Thomas Jefferson was like, ah, but if you want to have animals on the inside, that that is a freedom you are, you are granted. Look, okay, look, the Third Amendment actually says. No soldier shall, in the time of peace, be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in the time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. And thanks to the Third Amendment, someone like John Bolton or Mike Pompeo or any other sociopathic war criminal can't overstay their welcome in anybody's home. Not that they would be welcome in anybody's home to begin with. But this country's casual relationship with the First Amendment has led to the United States gutting those rights in front of our very eyes. The biggest example of how the freedom of press is being stripped away is America's treatment of Julian Assange. Currently, Assange is being held in UK's maximum security Belmarsh prison for a crime he didn't commit and has served the time for. And the UK anti-Assange judge said that he shouldn't be extradited to the United States because the abhorrent prison conditions might cause him to commit suicide. Which, to Joe Biden, the architect of mass incarceration, is a badge of honor. I believe when he was in the Boy Scouts, he specifically asked for that badge. Right, because because he said in the future I'm gonna I'm gonna persecute a, a, a journalist, so I want. I want a badge. I want a. I want a, 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 a freedom of press killer badge. Look, regardless of what the judge said, the United States still wants to extradite and imprison him for expo exposing the crimes of the rich and sociopathic. And the stripping of the first continues with big tech censorship of anti-establishment media as well. From the complete demonetization to strikes that prevent you from streaming or posting content, platforms like YouTube are trying to control the narrative and ensure only the state-sponsored corporate media perspectives are heard. Anything that challenges the state-sponsored narrative will be crushed under the might of Google, Facebook, and Twitter. And now, because of how vast and large the Black Lives Matter and defund the police movements are, state after state are putting forward new anti-protest laws. These new laws don't include the already authoritarian ALEC anti-protest laws, which fine and imprison activists for protesting critical infrastructure like pipelines, fracking wells, telecom towers, and the return of the McRib. The McRib has been critical in destroying the internal pipelines of the human body for decades now. Look, these boilerplate laws are written by Alec a, and is funded by the Kochs. And this is another glaring example of how our government is run by corporations. And we really are the corporate states of Wall Street. One nation, under the dollar, divisible for profits. Florida kicked things off this time around with its vaguely worded anti-riot bill. This immediately equates any protest with violent riots. Now, the claim here is that trying to reduce they're, they're trying to reduce property damage, but are fine with human beings being damaged 
in any capacity that you can damage them, right? But look, do you know how hard it is to build a, a, a new storefront or, or a new target? Okay, you, you can make a person in like nine months, and I've heard that it's kind of pretty fun to do that. You know, but buildings take years to get off the ground. So according to Florida, this bill is thinking of the children by allowing the murder of adults to make more children. It's a very human-centric bill if you completely change the definition of humanity. Now, Oklahoma and Iowa have bills that would reward a driver for plowing through a protest if the protest takes up space on a public road. You know, bicycle bicyclists uh, occupy public roads too. Should cars be able to plow through them for a minor inconvenience? I mean, this bill justifies the death of Heather Hare, who was killed in Charlottesville in 2017 by a white supremacist that rammed his car through a march. And it justifies the countless cops that have done the same. And by the transitive property of douchebaggery, we can see how cops are the same as white supremacists. Right? Both groups have the same mentality. I don't like these people marching to stop me from killing without consequences. Then maybe if I kill them, they'll understand. This paranoid logic that's taught is that's taught to all cops and racists, right? And at which point cops and racists have become the same thing. And if you're a cop and you aren't racist, don't worry. You'll either get booted from the force or have to become racist to keep your job. Yay, criminal justice. Indiana and Minnesota want to cut all social services from protests and protesters and ban them from running for public office. I mean, why would you have an activist that understands the issues run for office when you can have a greed-driven shill that are just meat suits to help corporations get into a position of power instead? I mean, come on. You know, and look, Minnesota has a Democrat governor, so this anti-protest movement is a bipartisan effort. Now, Oklahoma also wants to eliminate showing police videos in order to prevent cops from being doxxed. This is wrong on pretty much every level, right? These videos show police officers being murder machines, and when the officers' names are released, they don't release all of their personal details. They do release their very likely murderous or violent record. That's not called doxing. That's called evidence of a corrupt, violent, racist, and broken system. But that's the lesson learned from Der the Derek Chauvin trial. Don't show the video, right? And North Carolina is taking a cue from Oklahoma and not releasing the video of Elizabeth City's Sheriff Department murdering Andrew Brown Jr., who was parked in his driveway with his hands up. The defense attorney claims that Brown's car moved towards the officer, which is why they had to fire four times into his right arm and one shot to the back of his head. Look, this is an execution, whether you believe the attorney or not. But Judge Foster in Elizabeth City said that showing the video would create a serious threat to the fair, impartial, and orderly administration of justice. And this is the lesson that they learned from George Floyd's murder. Don't release the incriminating evidence that shows how racist and brutal the police actually are. It's hurting those fundraising numbers. If you want a fair, impartial, and orderly administration of justice, then this criminal justice system should get rid of qualified immunity and stop putting killer cops above the law like they're in a poorly made Steven Seagal movie. By not showing the video of the event, the cops get to control the narrative and put their blood-soaked thumb on the scale. And that's nowhere near fair or impartial. And their attacks on protesters make them far less than orderly. But North Carolina is banning protests in its own special little way. In order to protest, you need to get a permit from, a cid, from the city 15 to 90 days prior to the protest. Nothing says civil disobedience like being told how to be disobedient. If a government is approving a protest, then it's not a protest. It's a state-sponsored, sign-making platitude party. The point of a protest is to show people in a position of power that they're going against the people's will. 
Permits can be denied, but the voice of the people cannot. They can try, but eventually will be too loud and too large to ignore. Now Eric Nelson, Chauvin's gaslighting attorney, wants to vacate his guilty charges because the trial was too public and might have swayed the jury. Sorry, Eric, but you're wrong. What swayed the jury was the mountain of evidence that showed Chauvin publicly executing George Floyd and your racist defense didn't hold up. The videos showed uh, 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 how fucked up this system really is. And in North Carolina, they're ensuring they don't get another guilty verdict for a killer cop. The violence of the police doesn't end at just murdering innocent people of color. It's the answer to protests against police violence, too. In my hometown of Pittsburgh, police shot a protester in the eye with a, quote, less than lethal rubber bullet proving that Anything fired at a couple hundred meters per second is always lethal. Right? Every, I mean, everybody's heard of the, 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 the tall tale of how a feather can cut through a building when it's uh, in a tornado. This is the same thing, right? I mean, the, the protester, Alex Horrell, was then charged with a felony riot and several other misdemeanors. I bet the riot he caused was when he yelled out in pain when he was shot in the face by the Pittsburgh police. As if the abuse of this protester ends there, right? Back in April, during a hearing, the arresting officer, Officer Stumpf, accosted Horrell, claiming that he was taking photos of him in the courtroom. Horrell was texting his roommate and proved that there were no photos being taken. Now, Derek Chauvin was also just as paranoid in the courtroom during his trial, too. His eyes were darting everywhere. He couldn't keep focused on one place. Look, this is a sign of both steroid abuse and a guilty conscience. The irony here is that drug abuse is often used as a defense for police violence. Right? They, they were all hopped up on drugs. Okay, all, all, all the ones the D.A.R.E. program tells you not to do. We had to kill the person of color or they to kill us. This is like saying we all have to eat hamburgers and steak all the time because cows could eat us instead. They won't. Okay, N None of their four tummies can stomach the putrid meat of human beings anyway. The Pittsburgh police claim that Horrell was trying to throw a canister of tear gas back at the cops. But Horrell claims that he never did, but others around him probably were. First of all, isn't the bigger question why the cops chose a less than lethal round and used it as lethally as possible? And secondly, shouldn't we be asking why it's okay for the police to use a chemical weapon on civilians? A chemical weapon that is banned by the Geneva Conventions? Honestly, we've gone to war with brown countries for less than this. Cops claim that they have a video of Horrell committing property destruc destruction but have yet to produce it. Similar to most Bigfoot videos, though, I'm sure this footage does exist and will be grainy and blurry and vaguely hairy. And by the end of it, we'll probably find out that it was a man in a suit the whole time. Look, these laws are being written in states and cities controlled by Democrats and Republicans. It's not a surprise that the Republicans are pro-police murder, considering they're itching for slavery to return only to slap Abraham Lincoln in the face, but Democrats pretend like they're on your side. Most liberals would likely expect these kinds of laws from someone like Trump, but they tend to forget history. Joe Biden wrote the crime bill to show everyone that the Democrats are in fact tough on crime, escalating the already violent police. And at every turn, Biden only refers to protests as riots. He's just as bad as Trump when it comes to demonizing uh, constitutional, the constitutional right to protest. The possible loophole is that the states are under uh, uh, the, the states uh, are operating under the, the, the loophole that these states are operating under is that the First Amendment says Congress can't make laws, but state legislatures are a little different. Within the Bill of Rights, states have the right to do what they would like to, but usually states can't go against the constitutionally granted rights. But that's the gray area. Do you uphold the Constitution or states' rights? 
if the states are going to infringe on our on our rights, then this most holy of documents probably needs to be rewritten because it's no longer democratic. America puts a lot of emphasis on voting and not enough emphasis on direct actions. I mean, it's nice to say 250 million people voted, but to see 250 million people take to the streets, disrupting the daily complacency and challenging the state's authoritarian actions, it's a whole different story. That's that shows how big the movement against brutal police, authoritarian, and white supremacists really is. A few years ago, the, the Klan tried to hold rallies across Ohio. There were more Klan protesters than supporters. Compare that with the size of the BLM marches and the support for defunding the police. It clearly shows you where the American people are politically compared to these elected officials. Anti-protest laws and the attacks on journalists push us further into fascism. And this is being done under Democrat Joe Biden. The same kind of police violence we see under Republicans is just amplified under Democrats because of their gutless platitudes and lack of real, bold, positive change. Instead of defunding the police and funding social programs, mental health services, education, after-school program, and reducing poverty, Biden wants to teach the police, police to shoot you in the leg. Maimings for all! And that's what happens when you let a capitalist try to control socialism. They don't really understand it and they start shooting people in the leg all the time. But look, it's up to us to start pushing back against this kind of authoritarian bullshit, whether they approve our methods of protests and marches or not. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Hey, if you enjoyed this dispatch, uh, please make sure you hit the like button. Please make sure you share this out. Uh, and make sure that you're subscribed to uh, to this channel. A lot of the videos, uh, are, especially on YouTube and Facebook, are often suppressed. Um, they often are, are, are censored and shadow banned. Not a lot of people get to see these videos. Um, uh, and even when I share them out with as many people as I possibly can, even that gets stifled. So it's, it's really up to you guys to hit that like button and hit that share button and get the word out about these videos. And please do make sure that you are subscribed to my Rockfin channel. Rockfin is a great, easy way to uh, fight back against censorship and help uh, help all of my uh, podcasts and live streams and videos and shows get uh, get monetized. They they're a crypto blockchain site that that pays content creators for doing what they do, which is creating content. So you can go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha, uh, subscribe for free. Uh, there's a ton of free content on there, but if you uh, if you are in a in a stable financial place, you can um, sign up for uh, you can endorse my channel for ten bucks a month, and you get all of my premium content. But not just my premium content, but the premium content of pretty much everybody on Rockfin. So that includes people like Graham Elwood, Lee Camp, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, The Convo Couch, Nico House, Low Newsday, Facts of the Ground. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. There's 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 a ton of amazing content creators uh, on uh, on Rockfin. So that is that is going to kind of be the place to go. And I was telling people like, hey, if you're not a fan of you know YouTube content creators or uh, you know some of the YouTube uh, uh, news shows and 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 commentary shows, then I don't know if Rockfin is particularly for you. And and because of how YouTube has uh, censored my channel. Um, I am just telling everybody to just get a free Rockfin account um, and, and, and join, uh, join the community there. It's, it's a very w wonderful and positive community as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I would encourage you guys to go there, rockfin.com. Uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, 
or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email. And I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams uh, standalone videos or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do and then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content so tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member but if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was, uh, was my job full, uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the, the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without, uh, without, the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right. I've got uh, T-shirts. I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it. It's there probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab. And uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm gonna make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more. Then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay-what-you-want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play, all of, the, all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate regularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. Ash Krishmo and Haha.